Next, I want to talk to you about a more complex and more recent case, really, over, that happened over the last few years. This is a 39-year-old female uh, living in the USA, working as a makeup artist and, uh, you know, living a, an energetic lifestyle, hard work and hard pay, which, the, you know, the hard play led her to join Alcoholics Anonymous in 2012. Then her mother died in 2015, which was uh, an obvious stress factor for her. And so this is what we found at the time. First saw her in 2015 and she then really simply complained of intermittent fatigue, uh, comes and it goes. So she said, I'm wiped out for two or three days after every day of working. And she'd been on a tour with something and uh, that really exhausted her by the end of it. And um, so that was really quite similar to the... Uh, impaired exercise tolerance that we were looking at in the previous case. And so it was worth noting that in the American way, she was on quite a list of medications at that time. And the, you will see later that how relevant these actually are. Uh, we did a limited amount of tests at that time. We found that she was depleted in glutathione, obviously necessary for uh, antioxidant defense and for uh, basic excretion of uh, a lot of chemicals. Uh, and we found actually that one of the things it was excreting was nickel via the glutathione S transferase, which is, you know, what we measure when we're looking at the GSTM1 and so forth genes. This is the enzyme. So it's logical that if the GST enzyme is working overtime, excreting something, in this case, the nickel, then in due course, you are liable to deplete your stores of glutathione, and so that you know, the problem becomes wider. You, you've got generally impaired antioxidant defenses. So at that time, we didn't know a great deal about her case because we hadn't had the opportunity to investigate much. And certainly she was still committed to the pharmaceutical model. So we try to persuade her to tail off the medications and to do a ketogenic diet uh, as an anti-inflammatory measure and um, to take zinc and methionine, which are something of a specific treatment for nickel. Uh, and we got some benefit, really. Uh, she improved enough to function reasonably well for the next couple of years uh, until about the start of 2018 uh, when she came back and told us like this, that she could only manage about one or two hours of very mild activity. And it was clearly, if she overexerted, she did too much, the symptoms were definitely worse. And she tried to reduce the Cymbalta antidepressant from 30 milligrams to 10 milligrams, but that resulted in about a depression. So she agreed with the, the psychiatrist she should go back to the original dose. She stopped taking the birth control pill, but that resulted in, in extreme premenstrual syndrome and period pain. So bad that I lost consciousness, she said. So she went back on that too. So that hadn't gone terribly well. So 
we found at that point that the original nickel, that was about 30% better. So it had, you know, not been without merit, what she'd done, but there were new toxins there as well and new problems. And her attitude was moving forward. So she was trying to tail off the medications, but with only limited success. Our investigations found this. The nickel third line there was less than in 2015, but there were some new chemicals there, the DNA adducts listed. And the uh, and there were also evidence of mycotoxins and there was obvious oxidative stress. Now you can see that we're doing more tests here. Uh, so we're getting more information, but I think there are more problems too. And uh, in terms of her antioxidant defenses, there were two clear holes or defects in that. One was the mitochondrial SOD superoxide dismutase, the SOD2 version, which operates in the mitochondria, and that was clearly down without any apparent reason. I guess it was probably to do with zinc or zinc copper. It's zinc and copper dependent, so one or the other or both. And also metallothionin activity was very low. Now, metallothionin is an enzyme that um, for years I always thought it was simply a metal transporter, carries the essential metals like zinc and so forth to uh, the cells for to fuel their activity and carries the toxic metals away. So you can use it as a measure of an indicator of what toxic metals somebody has been having to deal with. But in fact, it's also an antioxidant enzyme. So that's a second hole in her antioxidant defenses there. So let's look at uh, the findings and the treatment in this case. Back in 2015, we already knew then that the, there was a toxin there in the...